we're back at the task of learning how to read Hebrew. And if you recall from our previous programs, we started out with the Hebrew vowels. And those are the Hebrew vowels, just to remind you, because they're very important. You put the Hebrew vowels with the Hebrew letters, the 22 Hebrew letters, and you can read. So I'm going to go over it again real quick. Here is your ah sound. Under the letter, you will see one of those signs. And um, basically, they're made of a horizontal line, which is an ah sound. Here is your a sound, two horizontal dots, or the three hanging grapes, a. Here is your e, a dot underneath. Or sometimes you have the u next to the letter, and that gives you an e sound. Here is your o sound, a letter and a dot on top, and a vav sometimes next to it. That combination will give you an o sound. Here is your u sound, three horizontal, uh, three uh, diagonal dots, a vav and a dot in the middle. That's an oo sound. And here are the two dots under the letter that represent the uh, short vowel, short sound. So those are the sounds of the Hebrew letters. And we learned two letters. The first letter we learned was Aleph. And the second letter is bet. With the dot in the middle, that is called dagesh. If you can see that. So the aleph and the bet. The aleph represents God, one of the characteristics of God, his mastery, his leadership. The bet represent the enclosure, enclosure, the house, the home. So here we have the leader, we have the home, leader of the home, as you recall, was Av, and Av is a father in Hebrew, or Abba, which is like, more like daddy. So that is what we did last time. Let me just introduce you again to the Hebrew letters, and look at the strings, the string of the Hebrew letters. Aleph Bet. Gimel Dalet Hey Vav Zayin Chet Tet Yud Kaf Lamed Mem Nun Samech Ayin Peh Tzadik Kuf Resh Shihin Taf And that is the Hebrew alphabet song. We've done it before, every time, and... Uh, that's just to remind you of the Hebrew letters. Here is the Aleph Bet book, which we're using. And the letter Gimel is the third letter of the alphabet. And let me show you something about the letter Gimel. In that little universe that we put together, the letter Gimel is a skinny letter. If you recall, the letter Aleph held the entire space. The letter Bet held the entire space. The Aleph was open from all directions, but it still expanded over the entire space. The letter Bet was closed on three sides, and we talked about the reason behind it. The letter Gimel is a skinny letter. It has a little top, front to back, going this way, and then we go down diagonally like this and give it a little leg going forward like this. So the little gimel, the sound of the letter, of the name of the letter, reminds you of the gamal, which in Hebrew, gamal in English is camel. And the letter so somewhat looks like a camel that is wa walking briskly walking forward. And uh, the, reason for, the reason for that letter to be called Gimel is after the camel. It represents, the letter Gimel represents the giver. And it's reflect, reflected in its name. 
the camel is called gamal from the same root, the same Hebrew root, which means to give. Now, why is the camel? Possibly because the camel is the ultimate giver. If you, if you think of a nomad society, in a nomad society in the desert, a, the camel is everything. Uh, he is the ultimate giver. They eat their, their meat, they drink its milk, they use the skin for tents, they use every part of the camel, live or, or dead, they use it for uh, useful purposes. So the camel is, is a very important to the nomad life. It can live without water for an extended period of time. It carries stuff. So it, it's, it's viewed in that society as the ultimate giver, and this is why in Hebrew it's called gamal, which is the giver. And uh, the name of the letter is gimel, representing that. It represents also, if you look at the shape of the letter, it represents the abundance, the uh, exerting influence that comes from top and goes, and goes down to us down here on earth. So the gimel represent the giving also of our creator. And um, it ref it's reflected in the graphical shape of the letter. In, in the letter gimel now, if we put it to work, we are going to see that how the vowels make the gimel work. And look at that. We have a gimel. And we use the vowel of a. Ah, that will make the gimel with the vowel of a ah will make it ga. So here is ga. And if we do gimel with an a sound, that will be ge. So I can write it in English here. It's ga and ge. And the next one, of course, will be gi. Here is your gimel. A yud, the tenth letter of the alphabet, the smallest letter, which is attached to the letter with the dot underneath, will give us gi. And then we have go, we have an O sound. Gimel with a dot on top, just like in here. And a vav next to it gives us go. And of course the U sound, we have a gimel. Vav next to it and a dot in the middle of the vav, that, give, that combination gives us gu. Or we can go gu with a three. Oops. We can do the gu without the vav with a three diagonal dots. So here is your gu. And then the last one is the g. And g, where do we have g like in words like bug? G, bug. That is the sound of the e uh sound. So now, if we want to read something, we have three letters under our belt. We have Aleph, Bet, and a Gimel. Let's see what we can do with three letters. We'll make a little room on the board. And now we can start reading Hebrew. This is serious. Um, here is, we have uh, Gimel, and next to it we put a bet, and we put 
that vowel in it. What would that be? We have a gimel with an a ah sound. Then we have a bet without the dot in the middle, without the dagesh, and that will make it a V sound. It's not a B sound because it's not stressed. It doesn't have the dot in the middle, like in here. So we have a gimel with an A sound. That's a ga. And a V sound, a bet, without a dagesh, without a dot. We have gav. That is the word, gav. It happened to be back in Hebrew. But right now, we're just doing experiments, and we're just reading. So it, it's not that important what the word means. I just want to demonstrate to you how to read. Here is another combination. We have the letter bet with a dot in the middle. That will make it a B sound and an A, right from here. So we have B, the letter bet with an A sound, ba, and gimel. The gimel is not voweled. So we have bag, bag. Another combination, here's your, in English, we call this, by the way, transliteration. When we transliterate, we actually write in English letters the sounds that we, the Hebrew made. So we can demonstrate it better this way. And this is just a transliteration of the word. We read the word bet with a dagesh, with a dot, with the a sound, and a gimel next to it, bag. So here is your transliteration. Here is your bug. Um, here is another one. We have a bet with a dot in the middle. That's a B sound. And an A sound, ba and an aleph with no vowel. Remember the aleph with no vowel has no sound, is silent. So we read ba, ba. Transliterated ba. Okay. If I want to do another one, let's try that. Okay, we have three letters. The first one is Aleph with an A sound. The second one is Gimel with an A sound. And a Bet with no vowel. So we have an Aleph with an A sound, just like in here, A. We have a Gimel with an A sound, Ga, and a Bet. But this Bet doesn't have a dot in, in, in the middle. And it's a V sound. So it will be agav. OK? And it's transliterated like this. Just like that. So as you can see, with three letters, we're progressing to reading because we know the vowels. We put the vowels together with the letters. And right there, you can read it. Let's do some more experiments. The next letters I want to introduce is the fourth letter of the alphabet. And the fourth letter, right here, in the Aleph Bet book, the fourth letter is the letter Dalit. 
And the letter Dalit, numerical, val uh, numer numerical value number four, represent a door, an opening. The letter Gimel represents giving. And the letter Dalit represents a door, or, or another way to look at it, it represents deficiency or poor, something that is missing. So let's look at the Dalit. First of all, the graphical shape of the Dalit is simple. You go front to back inside that little universe, and then you go down like this. And you make sure that you leave a little tail on the back side. Because if you don't, then it will look like another letter, like the R, the Resh letter, which we don't want to mix the two. So we want to be able to see that little tail. Remember, we had a little tail on the bottom in the letter, the letter Bet. So the Dalit has the same thing on the top, little tail on the back side. The letter Dalit represents the deficient work world. And the deficient world is the world we live in, is the world of particles, the world, um, the present world. Because the present world is made of four dimensions. We go um, front and back, right and left, top and, and, and down. So um, we have the north and the south and the east and the west. So th the world is um, the deficient world that we we'll, we'll live in. The graphical form of the Dalit is this. I can show you on the string of letters how the Dalit looks in print. This is your Aleph. This is your Bet. This is your Vet. Remember that little dot that we call Dagesh makes the bet sound like a B sound. And without it, it becomes a V sound. So here is your bet and the vet. Then you get the gimel and then the dalit. Here is your dalit with the little extended backside right here. And if you want to see the difference between the Dalit and that other letter that looks just like it without the backside extended, that is the letter Resh. And you can see that it goes smoothly down, just a corner. It doesn't have that little backside extended. So we have to be careful when we do the Dalit not to just go down this way, because then it will be mistaken for a Resh the R sound in Hebrew. So this is your Dalit. So now we have all these letters to work with. We have Aleph, Bet, Gimel, and Dalit. Four letters to employ. Let's see what happens. We can do a word just like this, Dalit, and next to it, we'll put a Gimel. The Dalit, we'll put a vowel on it from right from here, an A sound. So a Dalit with an A sound is Da, and the Gimel has no vowel on it. So together is dug. Transliterated just like that. Dug. It happened to be fish in Hebrew, but it's not important at this time. Uh, we're just experimenting with reading. Another interesting word uh, let's try to form another word here. Um, B. 
bet with an ah sound. Now this one has a dagesh, has a dot inside the bet, which makes it a B sound, not a V soft sound. So here's your bet with an ah sound, ba. And a dalet next to it. So we have a B, a bet, with an ah sound and a dalet next to it. We have bud, which would be transliterated like this. Bud. Um, let's see. Let's take a dalet. Put an aleph next to it and a gimel next to that. Take a vowel. What would that be? Here is your dalet with an ah sound, your aleph with an ah sound, and a gimel next to it. So you have da, a, g, da, ag. So I would do, do this da, a, g. So you can see that with four letters, you can start actually practicing reading. And um, we can practice some more. Let me just make some space on the board, make some room. As more letters we add, more we would be able to do with it. What the interesting part is that each letter is spiritually represented and is connected to each other. The first letter of the alphabet, the Aleph Bet, the Hebrew Aleph Bet, is Aleph. And um, Aleph, the name implies, we even use it in English. We use the, the word aluf. What is aluf? Someone above, someone exalted above the rest of us. So obviously, aleph with a numerical value of one and the meaning of the mastery and the leadership and the name aleph, aluf, is representing that trait of our creator. So the Aleph is the creator. The Bet represents the house or the home that is created for us. And um, the Gimel is a letter that represents the giving. The Dalet represents poorness or deficiency. So if we look at the string of letters, we can hear the story for example, in this um, string of letters, we have the story of um, giving represented, the uh, story of giving charity, for example. You have God who created the home, and the home is um, open on one side. Out of that opening, out of that door, vigorously walking is the gimel, the giver. Remember that. So the giver is walking briskly forward onto looking for whom? Looking for that dal, looking for that poor person. And um, this is teaching us the interaction between the, gi the giver and the receiver. You have um, the, uh, the gimel, the giver, is walking briskly out of the house. He's actively pursuing the, the poor. He's not waiting in his house until some poor person comes to his house, knocks on the, on the door, and completely um, let down their dignity and um, saying, you know, I'm hungry, give me a, a dollar for a hamburger or whatever. So um, the gimel, the giver, is an active pursuer of those who are in need. And he goes out and look for, for, for that person. Now the dal, the person who is um, in that need, is uh, walking away from the gimel, from the giver. 
he is walking away from him, but he's leaving a little opening in the back to teach us that there is an interaction going, um, a reciprocal interaction between the giver and the receiver. Today you're the giver, another time you might be the receiver. If the receiver will not give the gimel the opportunity, the giver the opportunity to give, then the, the giver will never experience that experience of giving. So there, there is an obligation on both sides. The giver does what he does. The receiver also have to open a little door at least for the giver to come in and do what he does because that may uh, be his uh, condition today and it may change in the future. So this is the reciprocal in, in, uh, relationship between the letters of the Aleph, the Bet, the Gimel, and the Dalet.